Hello friends of the Electrified Charging Fun and welcome to Electrified Speicher, your channel all around Skoda's e-mobility. This winter we went on holidays again to Scandinavia, to be more precise to Denmark and Sweden. And of course we took our ENYAQ, we had planned to do it with an LROC but th that didn't work out so this time again with an ENYAQ, hopefully very soon with the LROC. And in this video, which is part of a series of videos from that road trip, we are talking about driving up to Denmark, our first destination. And since this is more like a road trip, it's all about the experiences along the route. For example, with automatic preheating combined with manual charge planning. About the consumption, about charging and everything, which happened to us. So it's not that much of a technical video. It's how you have electromobility in your everyday life and how it works out. And since we went up to Denmark on nearly the exact route in summer, we have a great opportunity to compare the consumption, the driving experience and everything wintertime to summertime on a trip with over 1000 kilometers. And here we go. This is the charge planning the car did until our first stopover. Nothing has changed here. I can't show you anything new. Why? Because this software is still the same as it was when we went on vacation to Denmark in summer. It's still software version 4.1. No updates were done. And we know how Skoda has a hard time updating barely anything in the cars. As you might already heard in the interview with Klaus Selmer. I know it was only a German video. Maybe you watched it on the German channel, but uh, I cannot translate a complete video done in German with an interview partner like Klaus Selmer into English. What will I do now because I will, will charge or I want to charge at Ionity? Well, I will replace the next charger and I do it really old school. Here is my list of chargers. I did the route planning with the Ionity app and here you see I've got all the charge stopovers already put in so I will replace the next one here and then you might ask but if you do that why do you use automatic charge planning and you're right I could deactivate it here in the settings going to the root options and say don't add stopovers automatically but the question arise will then the optimization by active routing work so will the battery preheat even though I did a complete manual planning and that is what we will find out next. And that's a good opportunity to ch talk about manual charge planning because you see here there's no charger planned anymore because I said the car I do not want you to do that. So basically you had to have to add your chargers on your own and the key problem I have is something let me show you that we've got a roadblock up here. Basically you wouldn't drive this route you would go there where this big icon is and there is the charger I need and I can't go there because as you see the complete highway is blocked. So now I have to look for a better opportunity how to charge up and to reach my destination. Well after fiddling around a bit I decided that the next charger will be Nurton Hardenberg which is before we run into problems up here at Hanover which is basically too close. You see it's 163 kilometers and we are already at 253 kilometers charged yet we only had 15 minutes of a break here. We are still having lunch. Uh, the dog didn't have its, its walk so simply it's not possible to continue the journey right now. You see also something special here. Despite the fact that there is a charger planned the car says I can't reach the destination and there is no charge planning active. Well of course not because I have set it to manual planning and what I wish for the only thing I didn't want the charge planning to do is to put in additional chargers yet when chargers are given manual and you I, I mean the software could do now a calculation how much to charge to reach my destination but it simply avoids everything to do. And well, maybe I'm expecting too much and we should definitely just stick with completely automatic or completely manual, but it would be great to have a blended version out of this. Now we are doing a bit more of a break and then we hear each other 
at our last charger and then you will know whether we did it past the roadblock or whether the roadblock was still there. So we are on a nearly free highway here. Not because there is not much traffic, but because of a roadblock due to an accident back over there. It was a heavy one as far as I saw it. So we just had to drive around, which took a bit of time. Therefore, average speed went down. Consumption is due to the rainy weather here, a bit higher, 22.9 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers. And it's kind of funny to see how much of the unlimited freedom and unlimited speed in Germany remains as soon as rain starts to fall, because basically there is not much left. A lot of people are driving slower and there are accidents all over, traffic jams all over. And this one was not the last we experience right now because basically we are heading towards the next one. But um, I managed that we can charge at the Ionity here at Norton Hardenberg as planned. And even if you can't read German, you may have already saw the message up there that there's the next problem coming up. But doesn't matter. 13 kilometers to Norton Hardenberg and we've got our next rest and that is fine. And now I checked this optimization for charging up and I must admit maybe I was wrong with my first charging or my second charging stop where I said it went well. Maybe the battery was already at the right temperature because now three minutes before coming here this showed me that it could optimize the battery even more. So it did not run automatically. Now we are plugged in here. Yes, I added the new charger, this station, we are here to the root planner. And it was in here. Of course, the ENIAC did not want to charge due to my settings here. But it seems now that even if you have this optimization by active routing, um, activated but no automatic charging stops that it don't start the automatic preheating and this is something i would expect to be honest if i add an ionity here to my route planning the heating should start no matter if it's done manual or automatic now in denmark just cross the border and look here it's only 16 minutes left till we hit the charge of the ionity here and as you can see within the navigation system, the route planning, I have an Ionity, but the car doesn't think to charge there. And now let's look at my preheating theory. And we go to optimize and you see it takes 19 minutes to optimize, yet 15 minutes are left, but the heating didn't start. I'll start it now manually. And this proves my assumption that if you remove the automatic adding of charging of chargers to your route that also the automatic preheating won't start even though there is a charger within my route and I which is obviously needed to charge to reach the destination and to be honest at least from my opinion this is not how you build software well then just add a manual uh, preheating not this uh, automatic one I cannot understand how one implements something like this and thinks that if you add a charger manually, you do not want to preheat. As soon as a charger is added manually or, or automatic to the route planning, there should be automatic preheating in my opinion. Our first charging stop here in Denmark, again at the same charger we've been in summer times the ionity here with six chargers over there we've got the circle k chargers just behind us here is another big charging park with tesla and yes uh despite the fact that preconditioning didn't work well it's charging at maximum speed already so no problem at all and we had definitely had to go to the toilet here so this stop comes in quite handy when we are already at the charger well i am trying to collect some kilometers with my and charge app but unfortunately no challenge available at this charger here so yeah normally the challenges up here in the north are not done so much but we are on a touristic route so i guess a lot of germans pushing through here and they do the challenges so yeah no kilometers here for me but there will be more chargers so more tries to collect some kilometers and some energy but not today. 
because we are only 159 kilometers away from our destination. So this means we do not have to charge anymore. This is our last charge stop before we reach our uh, holiday home. I just left the highway here in Denmark at a random rest place. And look what we see in front of us. There are 12 chargers with two charging stalls each. So basically 24 chargings charging possibilities and the most important feature is over here you can see the prices for the charging directly the upper one is aeon drive so you'd pay three danish crowns 95 and there are 17 chargers available and below you see power go and they only take two danish crowns 95 and there are 21 chargers available so this is how it should be or this is how a rest place should look like you see all the chargers you will never ever experience waiting time here and you know directly the price you have to pay and the price you have to pay there is paid by credit card thing is so cheap here i pay ad hoc the same price i would pay with my ionity passport power and as you can see we are way too high for good charging we are over 50 percent and i simply do not have to charge but i, th I also saw the opportunity is great so the only thing i need to do is to pay here at the terminal for exactly the price stated there in the front plug in and charge up. And now you are looking into the sun here up in Denmark as we have arrived at our destination. The sun is shining directly in my face and another journey done. And if we just look here at the stats of this drive, it's 413 kilometers. The average speed is quite low. Well, that's due to Hamburg where you can't drive that fast and consumption 24.1 yes it's much colder outside than it was yesterday and we took the scenic route so we drove off the highway and also we just went to the beach up here have a walk with our dog and simply start enjoying holidays now we are at our holiday home here next thing will be to get everything out of the car to go to the supermarket because we are up here at Christmas so we need to purchase our groceries and there you have it, another 1,250 kilometer drive, a long trip with an electric vehicle without problems, but with some very important lessons learned about the car and about charging infrastructure. And now let's sum all this up. Holidays are long gone now and I'm back in my office and it's time to do some data and facts and figures. I didn't want to do that on my holidays, so I'm doing it right now. Well, now let's first look at the winter data, then we do the comparison with summer. And in winter on day one, we drove 824 kilometers in eight hours and four minutes. We've charged three times in a total of 71 minutes, which leads to a complete time of nine hours and 15 minutes for the whole drive. The consumption was 23.7 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers. On day two, we only drove 413 kilometers in four hours and 57. Yes, we have got that traffic jam near Hamburg. And we've charged 45 minutes, but we have to acknowledge the fact that the second charge wasn't necessary, the power go charge. I wanted to do that because of the experience. But nevertheless, the whole driving time was 5 hours and 42 minutes. And the consumption went up to 24.1 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers, due to the strong winds in Denmark. And if we now put all the numbers together, we drove 1,237 kilometers and we used a total amount of energy of 295 kilowatt hours. And if we do the total average consumption, we can say we needed 23.8 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers. And when we look at the amount of money we spent, well, the complete charging was 82.9 euros. So 83 euros and with that we've charged 295 kilowatt hours or basically we charged for 28 euro cent a kilowatt hour which leads to 6 euro 66 per 100 kilometers. Now let's have a look at the summertime. In Denmark it's not exactly the same place yet if we equalize all those numbers out we can make them highly comparable. 
And in summer we took two overnight stays until we came to our holiday destination. The first day we drove 660 kilometers with 17.8 kilowatt hours 100 kilometer. The second day we drove 424 kilometers with 18 kilowatt hours. And on the last day again 408 kilometers with 21.4 kilowatt hours. And if we do the math we've got 1492 kilometers of a total distance and we used 281 kilowatt hours for this trip. Yes, this is already 13 kilowatt hours lower than in winter time, yet the distance is higher. And um, if we calculate the average consumption, this is 18.8 kilowatt hours 100 kilometers. But one difference we have that is the average speed. In winter time we were able to drive with 95 kilometers an hour whilst in summer we were only able to drive with 89.5 kilometers an hour. So we were faster in winter. The result? Well in winter time we needed 5 kilowatt hours more than in summer on nearly the same route with nearly the same way of driving. So where does it come from? Well there is heating in winter, there's way more preheating in winter and of course we've got uh, worse weather. We had a lot of rain, we had strong winds, ne none of this was uh, in summertime. You could say the AC in summer and the heating in winter will equalize itself out of the equation. Yet you have got the higher preheating then you've got the winter tires with more friction, you've got the weather conditions and a bit of a higher average speed. And this is the result. Yes, we needed 26.5% more energy in winter than in summertime. Yet it was a good result. We were even faster and it was easy doable. We do not need to charge more than in summer. And in the end it was a really great experience. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider to subscribe so you do not miss out any new video. For example those out of this video series around the holidays. And thanks to all of you who are supporting me, be it with a PayPal donation or with a YouTube thanks. You really help me out to keep this channel up and running. So thank you for all of this and I hope we see each other in the next video and until then stay full of energy.